Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be doing a special episode um, of the top 10 sets and I'm going to rank them uh, because I do feel like the sets need to be ranked. Uh, before we go over the top 10 sets, I'd like to talk about a couple honorable mentions um, and also my criteria for judging the sets because I feel like that's important to uh, understand where I'm coming from with a lot of these judgments. Um, one of the very most important judgments that I'm making about a set is that it actually be used in its set form. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be used as a full set. You don't have to put on the entire piece of, uh, you know, of, of the set. Like, like, for instance, with IK, you don't have to put up the entire set and have the glow and everything. Um, you just have to be able to utilize the set in its many different forms, whether it be a two-piece bonus, a three-piece bonus, a four-piece bonus, a five-piece bonus, or maybe even the full set, uh, which is why my in my honorable mentions exists G-Face. Now, G-Face is definitely one of the best set items in Diablo 2, and I will never take that away from G-Face. However, it is never, and I mean almost never, utilized in its actual set. Um, mainly because the Wilhelm's Pride Troll Belt, or sorry, the, I, I've upgraded this set. The Wilhelm's Pride and the Magnus Skin Gloves are not really particularly that great. Um, the Magnus Skin Gloves can certainly be utilized, but I feel like Laying of Hands is usually better than them, them in most situations. Uh, the 100 attack rating on them is actually kind of nice, but for the most part, you really just don't generally use the gloves or the belt in most scenarios. And, um... Honestly, when it comes to this particular set, it is really the orphan's call because none of these pieces almost ever get used together. Um, it's usually one or the other. Um, next on my honorable mention list is the um, Cleglaws set, which I do feel like is a fairly nice set. And uh, some of the pieces of the Clegg Laws set can certainly be useful in certain situations, like for instance the gloves are actually quite useful um, for a, a boson, uh, but unfortunately due to the fact that it has a sword and a shield mixed in, um, it kind of makes it less useful for a boson. Um, and the reason is, of course, because the gloves don't really have any IAS on them without the other pieces of the equipment. Um, Clegglaws is actually pretty amazing, though, in its full form, and uh, with the unfortunate side effect that it has knockback on it, which is one of the reasons why it got knocked out of the top ten, uh, Clegglaws is quite honestly just an amazing piece of equipment, um, just in the entire set, as well as uh, two pieces. Um, you get Crushing Blow, very nice amount of Crushing Blow, you get Mana Steel, you get IAS, you get a very nice attack rating based on character level, you get... 50% deadly strike on the sword. You get maximum damage based on character level. And then on top of that, you even have um, some all resistances and some other nice effects. Uh, this set actually does have a lot of very finite uses, um, most notably on classes that already have knockback. Um, so for instance, if you're a early level bash barbarian, if you are a... Um, a Blade Fury Assassin. This actually works surprisingly well on a Blade Fury Assassin. And the reason why this didn't make it into the list is another one of my criteria. So my criteria um, number two is basically that the set be useful to more than just a very slender number of people. Um, there are sets in the game that have usefulness to a multitude of classes, builds, and everything else in the world. And while Clegg Laws can be useful to certain classes, um, unfortunately, it does tend to be less useful um, for, like, the wide majority of characters. Because if you're a Zeal Paladin, if you're a character who is trying to actually melee things, um, and also the fact that it, it includes both a shield and a sword is also a detriment um, to it, because basically that means that it's not useful by most characters that have, uh, you know, like, for instance, a two-handed weapon, a bow, a crossbow, a javelin. Um, you know, there are tons of different classes that really can't get the full use out of this particular set, just simply because of the fact that it includes a sword and a shield. But nonetheless... Clegg Laws is an amazing set, it just doesn't belong in the top 10. Um, next on my honorable mentions is Sazabees. 
Now, Sazabi's set is definitely an interesting one, and uh, due to the inclusion of a weapon in the set, it does have less usefulness than it otherwise should. And recently, it has been buffed up by quite a bit um, in the 2.4 patch uh, with the inclusion of things like additional damage reduction um, and uh, basically making the set just a, a lot more sexy for a character who might want to utilize it. Um, the sword really kind of brings down the set as a whole, unfortunately, because it's not really enough damage for a end game level character at level 73. However, um, the very interesting thing about this set is that it does fit on a mercenary. Now, when I made my Sazabi's video a long time ago, I talked about the fact that it could be put on a Act 5 barbarian two-handed wielding mercenary. But since then, we have had the addition of the new Frenzy Barbarian, which means that you can now fit the entire Sazabisa set onto a Barbarian Merc, and you can now equip him with another weapon so that you can actually make him more useful. Um, Sazabis is actually very, very nice for the Act 5 Merc. Is it best in slot? Maybe not, but it is still very, very sexy now, and uh, the inclusion of the 40% faster run walk as well as the DR um, as, as well as the other effects like the increased maximum life and all sorts of other very interesting things um, put Sazabis at least in the honorable mention category. Um, if you've never used it on an Act 5 Mercenary, um, you should uh, play around with it on the new Frenzy Merc. It's actually pretty sexy. Um, however, it is not versatile enough, in my opinion, to be added into the top 10 just simply because there's so many other good choices in the top 10. And, uh, and I, we're going to go over those later. Um, next on the honorable mentions uh, is Mavinas. Mavinas is one of those interesting sets that um, I do feel like is a very good set. Um, and the fact that it did not make it into my top 10 does not take away the fact that it is a very good set. Um, the reason why it did not make it into the top 10, in my opinion, um, is basically that it is very limited in its usefulness specifically to, number one, a boson, uh, because you really don't get a lot of like super amazing effects from the like two piece and three piece bonuses. Um, there are some usefulness uh, case use case scenarios like with the fifty percent bonus to attack rating on the helmet, um, but it's like it's it's very difficult to actually get that without putting on a large number of the pieces of the set. Um, because you don't really get the full amazingness of the set until you put on the entire thing. Um, it locks you too much into one particular form, obviously. Um, this is one of the reasons why it didn't make it into the top 10, because you're stuck as a boson. But not only are you stuck as a boson, but the, the Mavina set seems to be more specifically pointed almost directly at a Freezing Arrow Amazon. Um, so not only is it not particularly the best set for all boson builds, um, it is kind of more niched into one particular kind of build. Now, granted, you can use Mavinas on just about any boson, but it's not really the best in slot for any of them. And um, the individual pieces don't have as much versatility as something like, say, Trangs or IK set, or, you know, where you can put on one or two pieces and you can maintain, you know, uh, an amazing bonuses. Like, for instance, with... Um, Saigons, for instance, you can use the gloves and you can use the belt or you can use the gloves and boots or you can use the gloves and helmet, you know, armor, sorry, armor. Uh, you could use the gloves and helmet or you could use the gloves and shield, you know, and you can still get some pretty amazing effects with only like two or three pieces. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Saigons made it into the top 10, despite the fact that it's not one of my favorite sets. Um, However, Mavinas doesn't have that versatility. Um, so we already have three things here that are going against a set to prevent it from getting into the running. Obviously, it has to be used as a set. That is why G-Face didn't make it. Um, number two, it uh, has to be more versatile than just simply one skill set. Um, if it's really only used in one particular skill set and it's not even best in slot in that skill set, then you might look somewhere else. Um, and then on top of that, we also have the inclusion of weapons into the to the mix. Now, that's not going to necessarily remove it from the top running, but it is going to be a consideration. Um, last on my honorable mentions is the Alders set. 
Uh, the older set is an interesting one, and uh, and I do feel like with recent patches, uh, being able to upgrade the older set has made it a little bit more interesting um, as far as what you can do with it. Um, now that you can upgrade it to the higher tiers, you can upgrade the weapon, you can obviously socket the weapon with additional enhanced uh, defense and uh, damage and things like that, and uh, you know, just in general, the set has gotten better now that you can upgrade it because you can upgrade the the weapon to the elite tier um, and being able to upgrade the weapon to the elite tier has opened up a lot more possibilities with this particular set um, but much like some of the other sets um, one of the piece right here is druid only so that eliminates the set from being used from any other class. On top of that, we also have the fact that it includes a weapon, and the weapon is not always something that you would particularly want to use on a character. Uh, maybe you are a boson. Maybe you're an assassin. Maybe you're um, any other number of characters that don't want a weapon taking up one of their slots. Um, on top of this, we also have the fact that... Um, the armor piece is not really pointed toward anybody except for a druid, um, and you're left with essentially just the boots. So, like most people who are not a druid, um, even the druids themselves, might necessarily only want to use the boots along with another piece. Um, and uh, there's really not a lot of very good, like, bonuses along with the bonuses that are on the armor that make it versatile enough to be used, you know, kind of like in a, a, a modular situation. In fact, most of the bonuses that the set gives come from specifically um, the full bonus. So when you have the full bonus, that's when you get the actual the nice effects. Uh, the 150% bonus to attack rating is nice, but it does um, require two pieces. So you can use things like olders and you can use the weapon, but the weapon is very subpar in terms of damage and has to be built up. Um, you could use the armor, but the armor is extremely pointed toward a druid with the elemental skills, shape-shifting skills, although it does have some other halfway decent effects, but I feel like you'd be better off with just about anything else. Um, but, but putting on three pieces will give you a nice 50% bonus to magic find. I mean, in general, it makes it into the honorable mention because I do feel like it is useful, and a lot of people actually do use the older boots. However... It just doesn't quite have the versatility of some of the other sets that made it into the top running. Uh, last of my honorable mentions is the Hasuras set. I'm sure I said that wrong. Uh, the Hasuras set makes it into the honorable mentions because of its very sexy two-piece bonus. Uh, unfortunately, the addition of the shield does make this set somewhat less desirable for most people. However, the two-piece bonus does give a massive amount of attack rating, faster run walk, fire resistance, and also a pretty decent amount of defense and uh, cold light resistance as well. Um, this particular bonus right here, the two-piece bonus with the boots and the belt can actually be useful even far into hell difficulty if you're just desperate for attack rating. Um, the attack rating scales with your level, obviously, and also gets affected by things like plus percentages, so it does more than it actually states, especially when you're talking about like um, like when you have things like claw mastery and weapon skills and things like that involved. Like, for instance, if I were to um, beef up these skills, you would notice that we've got, what, 220% attack rating there, um, and then we could put something like uh, we got the attack rating on Dragon Talon, which is 685%, so you add those two together. Um, and before you know it, that 990 becomes a massive amount of attack rating, that um, can help you a ton. Now, the reason why it doesn't make it into the running, into the top 10, is just simply because it's that's the only usefulness of this set, really. Um, the full piece is generally not used, despite the fact that it has cannot be frozen, because the shield is practically terrible. And, um, you know, even if you were to upgrade these to their highest tier, as you can see, the Mithril Coil goes pretty high in the defense, and the boots stay at about 64. Um, they just don't quite have the usefulness later game that most people are looking for, especially since boots is one of the items, because a lot of people, a lot of melee characters, would prefer to use things like goblin toes, um, you know, uh, gore riders, uh, things that are going to enhance their martial prowess, uh, as opposed to things that are going to hurt it. Uh, attack rating is definitely nice, but, you know, so is crushing blow and deadly strike and open wounds. 
Um, but without further ado, um, let's get into the top 10 sets, and we're going to start with the number 10 set on the list, which is Saigon's Complete Seal, coming in at number 10. Um, this one really kind of just squeaked in for me, and uh, I am not, if you've watched any of my videos, I am not a lover of the Saigon's set. I feel like the Saigon set is a very poor set outside of normal difficulty, and quite honestly, doesn't really do very well um, once you enter into Nightmare, and is definitely not usable in Hell difficulty, except for Piecemeal. Um, and Piecemeal is exactly the reason why this set made it to another number 10 spot. Uh, because although I would never utilize the entire set outside of normal difficulty, um, I do, however, enjoy using a piecemeal type situation. Um, one piece in particular that is absolutely amazing is the gloves with the 30% increased attack speed and 10% life steal. Um, this combination of 30% increased attack speed and 10% life steal requiring only one other piece of equipment means that you can combine this with just about any other piece of the set for a pretty nice effect. Um, Saigon's Greaves obviously could be used. Um, Saigon's Armor could be used for this. You could still maintain your, your very nice 30% and 10% lifesteal. Um, you can also utilize the belt for this, which is uh, definitely very nice. And, uh, and then you end up with a defense based on character level. Um, but the real, honestly, the real clincher for the gloves combo is the helmet. Um, the reason why is because you end up with 30% increased attack speed from the gloves, 10% lifesteal from the gauntlets, uh, from the from the two-piece bonus, and then you also end up with a very nice attack rating based on character level from the two-piece. Uh, this two-piece bonus is honestly one of the best two-piece bonuses of this set, and uh, you could also combine this with the boots, and you could grab a little bit of extra magic find. 50% magic find is certainly not bad, and 20% faster run walk with cold resistance 40% is kind of sexy. Um, later on in the game, obviously you're not going to want to wear these boots because you're going to want to put on things like Gore Riders, Goblin Toes, um, any other number of boots that offer better effects than Saigon's. However, this three-piece bonus is the reason why this set made it into the top ten. Um, now, of course, you can also put on the shield, but the shield is actually pretty garbage. Uh, it doesn't offer any green bonus. And then on top of that, um, once you're outside of normal difficulty, there's so many better shields than Saigon's. Um, the belt is not a bad belt, and it's definitely one that you could use early on specifically for the... Um, the lifesteal if you don't have the helmet or boots. And, uh, you know, once you put on the armor, the armor is, uh, you know, okay for a low-level character. Um, and there are people who utilize the entire set. Don't get me wrong. Um, Saigons can be utilized in normal difficulty all the way up to the end um, if that's what you'd like to do. But I do feel like there's just so many better options than full Saigons. Um, that three-piece bonus, though, between the gloves, helmet, and boots is probably one of the best. And uh, honestly, it's really comes what it really comes down to is the gloves and the helmet. Um, if you're a melee character, especially one that's starting out early, um, at level 6, when you can put this set on, these are upgraded by the way, um, this is one of the best two-piece bonuses that you can possibly put on your character. 30% uh, IS is going to obviously increase your damage potential exponentially, and 10% uh, lifesteal is going to help keep you alive. And the 792 attack rating is going to make it so that you land your hits more often. Um, everything that a starter, melee, or ranged character uh, needs. Um, you could utilize this very well on a boson as well. Um, there's really not much more to say about Saigons. Um, it definitely is a very interesting set in terms of uh, piecing out specifically what you would want. But um, it did make it into the number 10 slot. Uh, let's move on to the next set on the list, which is number 9. Number 9 is Griswold's Legacy. Griswold's Legacy is one of the other endgame sets, just like Mavina's uh, or Alder's, but it makes it into the top 10 simply because of its extreme customizability. Um, Alder's has a little bit of customizability, but Griswold's has so much more. Uh, with four sockets in the uh, Caduceus, with two sockets in the Helmet, with three sockets in the Vortex Shield, and three sockets in the Heart, the armor piece, um, this set boasts an amazing number of sockets of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
Uh, this set can actually be customized extremely well, even for non-Paladin characters. Um, if you are any kind of character who would like to utilize the sockets, you can. Uh, the armor piece has negative requirements on it, which means almost anybody can utilize it. In fact, you will often find people just throwing three perfect topazes in it early on for a cheap and effective magic find armor. Um, the shield, honestly, can be one of the most ridiculous shields if you happen to find it, uh, just simply because it already has all resistances 45 on it with three additional sockets and very nice block rate, which means that if, if you want to just even be cheap with the shield, you can add in three perfect diamonds and you can have an amazingly high resistance shield, which will carry you through hell difficulty. Um, the Caduceus can literally be utilized in a myriad of ways. Um, you could put 1540s in here, you could put facets in here, um, you could literally put facets in the entire set, lightning facets, and you could run a uh, Fist of the Heavens Paladin. Um, you can do so many interesting things with Grizzrolds because of its customizability um, and the fact that the pieces of the armor are actually pretty darn good in combination um, with other players. So like, you know, Griswold's Heart actually gets utilized a lot on non-Paladins. Um, the Caduceus actually gets utilized on non-Paladins as well, uh, mainly because of the fact that it has some very nice increased attack speed and four sockets. It's hard to beat 40% increased attack speed, 240% enhanced damage, and four free sockets to do with what you want. Um, even if you just wanted to throw four Shale Runes in here and literally make the increased attack speed absolutely bonkers, um, it's one of the most interesting things that you can do with the set. Um, unfortunately, um, some of these pieces are actually kind of rare. Uh, the Vortex Shield is actually pretty rare, and the Caduceus also spawns between, I think it's like three to four sockets, so you can often find it in a subpar condition. Um, as for the individual set bonuses, they're not really too amazing. Um, you do get a nice amount of uh, strength, um, and then you get a nice amount of dexterity uh, for two, three pieces but really honestly the bonuses the main bonuses come in with the uh the full set and even in its full set which is another one of the reasons why this set made it to the top 10 is that it actually does function surprisingly well as a full set are you going to have this set on as a best in slot for every single character no but you can very easily use Griswold and beat the game with it with no issue whatsoever. Um, and it provides you with pretty much everything you need from resistances to life to dexterity to plus to skills and <laughs> a plethora of sockets to literally do as you wish. Um, that's why this one made it to number nine. Uh, number 10, or sorry, number eight on the list is... Uh, and that is Natalia's Odium. Natalia's Odium is one of those really strange sets that um, it doesn't really have as many pieces as something like IK, um, but it does have some very amazing pieces. Um, Natalia's Mark, the Scissors Suya, come with a very nice plethora of damages. 40% uh, increased, 200% enhanced, 200% to demons, 200% to undead, including ignores target's defense, which is pretty darn sweet. Um, the armor piece can be highly customizable with its three sockets and its plus two shadow disciplines, as well as its life based on character level, and quite honestly is a very nice piece of equipment, even if you have no, no plans to actually wear Nat's set. Um, the reason is, is because, you know, having access to three sockets like that early on can certainly be very amazing. Um, we also have Nat's boots, which quite honestly are also very nice to put on and uh, can be utilized to fill in resistance gaps with their 40% faster run walk. Uh, the only piece that really kind of uh, lacks a little bit is the helmet, although it does have all resistances as well as a massive amount of strength and dex. The main issue with a lot of these pieces is that they roll. Uh, while Natalia's mark is always the same, no matter what, uh, the helmet has way too many rolls. The dex, the strength, and the resistances, I believe, all roll. Um, as well as the defense. The uh, Natalia's uh, armor has some very bad issues with the sockets. You will often find it with one or two sockets. And, uh, and the boots has a pretty big role on the resistances, which could make the boots less than desirable. Um, however, if you look at the multi-piece bonuses, there's really not a very good 
<laughs> amount of multiple bonuses on these. Um, even for three pieces, you get hardly anything at all. Uh, two pieces gives you magic damage reduced by 15. It's not until you put on the entire set that you get the massive 30% uh, damage reduction, which is kind of insane, as well as the all resistance is 50, the 14, 14 mana and lifesteal, and then the, the plus the skills. Um, in general, I believe when you're using Natalia's, you're piecing it out. Um, and that's one of the uh, the best things about this set is that you can utilize the pieces that you would want at that particular time. Um, you know, if you need strength and dex and some resistances, you can use the helmet. If you need a nice pair of 40% faster run on boot boots, you can use those. Um, if you need a three socket armor to do something with on an assassin, why use something like Griswold's when you can use a plus two shadow disciplines Natalia's shadow lowercated mail? Um, this armor is actually pretty insane for uh, a customizable piece of equipment for an assassin. Um, would you utilize this on a non-assassin? Probably not, but you could. Um, the life based on character level as well as the poison length reduction might come in handy for something like a... Uh, a mercenary, just simply to keep, keep them from dying from the poison. Um, and then Natalia's Mark, although it doesn't have any plus to skills, is actually surprisingly good for a melee style build and um, definitely can be a placeholder until you come across your best in slot weapon. Um, honestly, when it comes to Natalia's, I'm actually really excited about this particular set uh, just simply because it just has... Uh, uh, the smallest number of pieces, uh, especially when you consider something like IK, which is literally uh, weapon, helmet, armor, boots, belt, gloves. I mean, it's kind of insane, especially considering that the, the weapon is a two-handed weapon, which means it consumes both your weapon and your shield slot. Um, so having a very nice endgame level set for an assassin like this um, that is only four pieces means you can work it into your setups um, however you might want and that massive 30 percent damage reduction can be stacked with things like fade and you can easily go over the 50 percent cap and over protect yourself versus things like amplify damage uh, which makes this set a very tanky build especially when you consider the fact that it has a massive amount of life and mana steel um, it also gives you a huge amount of resistances and the 30 percent damage reduction as well as an mdr of 15 which while it might not seem like much it also gives you mdr of three on the helmet and mdr can definitely come in handy to counter small small, frequent, small damage magic effects. Like, for instance, Charge Bolt. Uh, charge Bolt, when you fight a lightning enchanted monster, um, is going to come out faster and faster and faster the more you attack them, right? So having something that can just, like, cut a huge portion of the small damage effects away means that they're probably not going to do very much damage to you at all. Um, all in all, I do feel like Natalia's deserves its spot on the list at number 8. But, um... Let's move on to the next set, which I think will surprise you a little bit uh, because it's been changed recently. Number seven on my list is the Cow King's Leathers. Uh, the Cow King's Leathers recently received a large number of buffs in 2.4, as well as the ability to upgrade the armor to allow you to get a little bit more defense out of a set that was otherwise defense inept. And... Um, now that you can finally upgrade it to its highest form, which is the Scarab Shell Boots, the Wire Fleece, and the Shaco, um, it has some very sexy effects. Um, is it going to be like a best-in-slot melee set? No. But it does have 25% chance to cast level 5 static field when struck, which is going to bring down the health of all the monsters around you very, very nicely. Um, it has plus 1 to skills. They added 30% increased attack speed on this, which means that now you get a very nice bonus to attack speed. And you could beef that up even further by socketing the armor or the helmet uh, with 15% IAS jewels. Um, we also have a pretty sexy 100% magic find on this set, as well as 25% percent magic find on the boots so we have 125 percent magic find on a three-piece bonus set with some very very sexy effects like increased attack speed plus the skills chance to um, croc static field um, and even extra gold for monsters as well 
Um, in my opinion, since the changes to the Cow King set, it has definitely become one of the sexier sets in the game, uh, specifically for any character who might want to do magic finding on a melee or ranged character. Um, the addition of the 30% increased attack speed, the plus one skills, and the uh, static field make it very good for a melee character, but you could also utilize this on a ranged character, specifically for magic finding. If you wanted to maximize the magic find on this particular set, you could. Um, if you socketed the helmet and the armor and put topazes in both, you would have 125 plus 24 plus 24. So you would be sitting at a very, very sexy, what is that, 197? So 197% magic find from a three-piece set that actually does provide you bonuses that would actually be useful to you as a character. I mean, you have to think that 30% increased attack speed is certainly not going to be something that you're going to shy away from. Plus one to skills is certainly going to be helpful. And obviously, you also get a very nice um, effect on here of uh, additional resistances. I mean, we've got, what is it, um, 18 on the armor. Um, and then we also have an additional resistances of 25% poison from the full set. And then we also get the... Um, decent amount of resistances from three pieces and you could you could beef that up further if you wanted to um, i'm not really a hundred percent sure um, that this set would ever be utilized in a best in slot character um, but it could easily be incorporated into a low level character a mid-level character or a high level character for magic finding and it works surprisingly well on low level characters specifically just to level up and have fun um, and because it is a three-piece set, it can be combined with other sets or other items. Like, for instance, you could use angelic rings and amulet. Um, you could also utilize uh, things like Saigon's gloves and belt, uh, which would give you an additional 30% increased attack speed. Um, you could also throw in uh, other pieces. Uh, like, for instance, uh, if you wanted to build Magic Find, one of the easiest ways for you to do that would be to utilize the Angelic Amulet, Rings, and the Sword, um, and that would give you a huge amount of Magic Find on both rings, and then you could throw on Magic Find for the belt and, and gloves as well. Um, this particular set has definitely come up in the world since it was originally introduced, and uh, the changes that they made to it, I do believe, are for the better. Uh, let's move on to the next set on the list, which is the Angelic Raiment. So the Angelic Raiment set is one of those crazy sets that is really low level. And because it is really low level, it has the ability to do some pretty amazing buffs. Um, as I was talking about earlier with the Cow King set, um, one of the things that you can do is you can wear the pieces of the set and you can get the magic find bonus um, the magic find bonus is actually uh, per ring it's 50 percent magic find per ring and it does require you to wear uh, three pieces of the set um, two rings actually does not count for this um, so you would have to wear either the amulet the ring and the armor or the amulet the ring and the weapon um, and this would give you an additional 50% magic find per ring, which is pretty insane. Uh, we also get a very nice attack rating bonus of 1,188, depending on your character's level, of course. Um, and it, this actually comes from both rings. So one of the really most amazing uses of the angelic set is literally the set bonus with three pieces um, and it's not even three pieces it's technically two because the ring only counts as one piece uh, despite the fact that you're wearing two of them however you do receive the effect of both rings so not only do you get a massive amount of attack rating from both rings you also get 10 dexterity on top of that as well as the 20 life which adds up to 40 the replenished life 6 which adds up to 12 and then you get the 20 percent damage taken goes to mana and 75 life from the amulet all of which makes this three-piece combo just absolutely amazingly sexy. Not only that, but now that you can upgrade the pieces of the set, the set itself has actually elevated a little bit higher and can be utilized on things like Holy Fire, Holy Freeze Paladins, Holy Shock Paladins. Any character that utilizes elemental damage for the most part instead of physical damage can get absolutely great use out of the full set. And because it has a huge amount of magic find on it too, um, wearing the set on even something like a sorceress just for the magic find isn't actually a bad idea. 
because you get 50% per ring, which is 100%, and you get 40% from the set, so you've got 140% magic find here for wearing the angelic pieces. And you could combine this with other magic find equipment. Um, for instance, one very easy thing that you could do is Saigon's gloves, Saigon's belt, and Saigon's boots, which would add another 50% magic find from the boots. And then you could throw on uh, something like, I don't know, like a Tarn Helm or something like that, or just a, a socketed Topaz helmet, uh, whatever it is that you come across. But because Angelic has so many varied uses, that's why it made it up to number six on my top ten sets list. Um, Angelic is one of those sets that drops all the time, too, and I feel like this is another thing that really needs to be talked about with this set, is that not only is it a good set, not only is it useful but you will find the rings and the amulet all the time, which means that they are almost always available to you as options for your character's development. Um, if you don't happen to find these pieces on your way up, you're actually pretty unlucky. Uh, moving up to the next on the list is uh, number five, one of my personal favorites. And that is Eratha's Finery. So Eratha's Finery is just an amazing set. Um, it is one of my favorite sets of all time in Diablo 2, and I'm not going to be shy about saying that. And the reason is, is because it literally fixes your resistance problems in normal difficulty to the point where you're essentially an unkillable tank. And I feel like we need to at least go to normal difficulty to show you this. Um, in normal difficulty, when you put on Arathas set at level 15, mind you, which is the level requirement for Arathas set, you have 85% to all resistances. Not only do you have 85% to all resistances, but you also obtain 75% poison length reduction, 20% faster run walk, 20% increased attack speed, half freeze duration, and 24% piercing attack. This means that Arathas is actually usable even into Nightmare and Hell difficulty. Uh, believe it or not, you can socket the helmet. You can add some more amazing stuff in here, like a 15% IAS jewel. Um, you can utilize the set in many different ways. Uh, for instance, just even the two-piece bonus for using the helmet and the, the, um, the gloves or the belt and the gloves gives you a very nice 20% increased attack speed and 10 dexterity at a relatively low level. The real way that this set shines, though, um, is the amazing full piece, and that is one of the reasons why it made it up to number 5, uh, because the massive 10% maximum poison resist, maximum cold resist, maximum fire resist, maximum lightning resist, all of which add up to a plus 65 to all resistances from a four-piece set, 20% increased attack speed, 20% faster run walk. I mean, it gives you 25 dexterity, and it is just an extremely defensive set, especially in hardcore, where your life is, you know, literally hanging by a thread. Something like an Arathas set can literally set you up to move your way forward through the game with relative ease. Um, this particular set has always been one of my favorite and usually what I end up doing is socketing the Arathas coil with something very nice around level 15. The addition of the 24% piercing attack, though, has brought this up on the list even further. Um, I would have originally put Arathas probably down at number 9, with uh, right next to Saigon's, uh, simply because it's not something that you ever see people using as a best-in-slot piece of equipment. However, the additional 24% piercing attack has now made this basically a best-in-slot piece of equipment for Amazons and Throwing Barbarians, um, early levels, and even upward into Nightmare and Hell until they start to get better equipment. That 24% piercing can be an absolutely clutch piece of equipment for a character that otherwise does not have any piercing until much later in the game. Amazon doesn't get pierced until level 30, and the Barbarian is not going to have a decent level of pierce until he maxes out his Throwing Mastery. And even then, an additional 24% pierce on top of what his Throwing Mastery is giving him is definitely not going to be something he's going to shy away from. Um, all in all, I do feel like Arathas deserves the number 5 spot because it is just absolutely amazing from a defensive standpoint. The other most interesting thing about Arathas is that it does not consume the shield or the weapon slot, which means that you can utilize this piece 
this set on just about any character. Uh, whether you are a sorceress, a paladin, a necromancer, it really doesn't matter. If you need resistances, if you would like to have maximum resistances, um, you can utilize this set. You can even use this set, believe it or not, to kill the ubers with. Uh, because the increase to maximum resistances, along with the other very nice effects on it, make you a tank. Just a literal tank. And so when you go in and you fight things like Uber Mephisto, who's shooting some massive amount of lightning at you, and he has conviction to rip your resistances down, having this overprotection of resistances in combination with your other equipment can literally protect you even from something as devastating as Uber Mephisto's conviction. Now, is it obviously the item that you would definitely want to bring in there if you had to choose every single item in the game, like you had everything in front of you like a smorgasbord? No, you would probably choose something else, like maybe Guardian Angel Templar Coat with an Um Rune in it, or something of that nature. But if you're on a budget and you're trying to work through the game um, to get as high as you can, as fast as you can, like at the start of a ladder, um, finding an Arathas set and putting it on can definitely propel you forward into Hell Difficulty and make your journey much safer. Um, let's move on to number four on the list, which is... And that is Death's Disguise. So Death's Disguise made it to the number four spot uh, for basically one reason. And that is, it is a very easy to use, very sexy two-piece combo. The weapon, unfortunately, is pretty much garbage. Um, it has a rather low level requirement, but because of its high dex and strength requirements, it is almost impossible to actually use on pretty much any character unless you've got some sort of an strength or dex enhancing equipment. Uh, which means that you generally don't look at this set from its full bonuses. Um, however, the two-piece bonus from the gloves and the belt are absolutely amazing. Um, the problem with this set has always been that the belt has the absolutely minimalist potion slots known to man. However, due to recent patches in 2.4, um, they have made it so that you can upgrade the Death's Sash into its Nightmare and Elite forms. Um, giving it the full potion slots available, uh, which means that Deaths has now skyrocketed, in my opinion, upward to a much more amazing piece of equipment, or rather dual, d duo piece of equipment, uh, between the Deaths Hand and the Deaths Guard Demon Hide Sash. Um, it gives 30% increased attack speed, which is absolutely amazing. There's very few gloves in the game that give 30% increased attack speed. Saigon's is one of them. Uh, we also get 8% lifesteal, similarly to Saigon's, that gives 10% increased uh, lifesteal. However, uh, we also have some other amazing effects on here. Uh, number one is the massive poison resistance on the gloves with 75% poison length reduction, uh, which pretty much protects you from poison uh, for the entirety of normal difficulty, nightmare difficulty, and uh, usually even hell difficulty, especially when you're fighting monsters like Lilith. Um, and then on top of that, we have an amazing Cannot Be Frozen on the Sash. Uh, the Cannot Be Frozen on the Sash is actually super sexy and can free up your ring slot so that you can use something else other than Ravenfrost. Um, even by itself, if you just wanted to use Death Sash just for the Cannot Be Frozen, especially early game when it's basically usable at level 6, it is the one of the earliest and easiest ways to add Cannot Be Frozen to a character, and it's easily upgradable for max potion slots once you get to level 24. However, we also have an increase to resistances of 15. So we have all resistances 15. We have cannot be frozen. We have extra defense because now we can upgrade the belt so it has a nice 54 defense. We also have the 50% poison re resistance, the 75% poison length reduction, and the 30% increased attack speed with 8% lifesteal. All from a meager two pieces. That's it. Just two pieces, and you get all this and more. And if you act now, we'll throw in the Slice and Dice Vegematic. I'm, I'm selling you guys this, like on an infomercial. Um, quite honestly, the Death's two-piece is now one of the sexiest uh, in the game. And believe it or not, Death's two-piece was best in slot before the ability to upgrade it. And now that you can upgrade it, it's just even better. There are several classes in the game that actually can use and do use use the Death's two-piece set as their optimal equipment. Um, and it's mainly due to the addition of the Cannot Be Frozen in situations 
where the character would otherwise probably not use a Ravenfrost. Um, I have se built several characters before which have gone out of their way to avoid using Ravenfrost because of their specific dynamics. And something like a Trang's Belt or a Death Scar that has cannot be frozen can be absolutely um, amazing for those character builds to help get them what they need. Um, next on the list is... That's right, the Immortal Kings set. Uh, the Immortal King set made it to this list um, despite the weapon, which is probably one of the biggest detriments to this set, uh, specifically because it's just limiting. Um, no matter what kind of character you build, um, if you wanted to use the IK set, you would have to build a Mace Barbarian. And that's not generally how people like to build their characters. Now granted, IK can actually crush Hell Difficulty um, in Players 1. It does start to suffer around Players 3, and it does kind of poorly in Players 5. Uh, but you can definitely beat the game with a full IK set uh, with absolute ease. Uh, recently, they added the ability to upgrade the pieces of the set, and as I explored it, I realized that, yes, you could upgrade every single piece, and quite honestly, it was actually worth doing so, because um, the amount of strength requirement that is required to put this set on in the first place is kind of insane, and upgrading it to the higher strength required pieces is actually not a bad idea, because it gives you a little bit of extra defense on a character where a little bit of defense is actually a lot, because it balloons out with things like Iron Skin, Shout, and uh, maybe even other effects that you might be using at that particular time. Um, the real benefit of Immortal King, though, comes from the individual pieces. Um, Immortal King's helmet, uh, with its magic find and two sockets, makes an amazing magic find helmet for early level barbarians. Um, obviously, with the 40% that's already on it, in addition to two topazes, um, you can very easily raise that up quite, uh, quite nicely. Um, we also have the very nice uh, combination of the boots uh, with other pieces that has plus two combat skills on it. Um, so it's 40% faster run walk boots with 40 with two plus two to combat skills. Um, now to get the plus two to combat skills, you do have to be wearing three pieces, um, which is not generally too big of a deal because you can do something like the helmet, the um, gloves, and the boots, or you can do something like the um, the the gloves, the boots, and the belt, um, all of which actually work out pretty nicely on characters, especially considering that the gloves have the very sexy 125% increased attack speed. And the 125 to attack rating isn't too much to cry about either because it does get ballooned out very nicely by your skills. And, um, you know, you can combine this in any number of ways to get the effects that you might specifically want. Um, there are a lot of piece bonuses for this particular set. As you can see, we have things like enhanced defense, faster hit recovery. We've got combat skills, defense, magic find. We've got lifesteal uh, and 25% increased attack speed, um, all of which can combine together very nicely to make some very interesting effects. And um, especially the strength and dex that is on the gloves can also be very uh, handy for specific builds. And this is not just Barbarians. So Barbarians specifically can get some good use out of this set, but even non-Barbarians can actually get some pretty nice use out of these pieces. Um, specifically, the gloves and the belt combo is actually a pretty solid combination for a lot of characters, uh, specifically because the belt has some very nice resistances, 25 strength. The gloves has some very nice uh, effects as well as plus 20 strength, which means utilizing the gloves and the belt together can give you a massive amount of strength, 45 to strength, as well as 20 to dexterity and some pretty good resistances, along with 25% faster hit recovery. So not only can this set really do quite well in players 1 and players 2 and players 3, um, it actually works very well in pieces as well. And that's one of the reasons why IK made it so high on the list to number three, because you literally can piecemeal this set or wear it completely as a whole, or you can just simply pick and choose one particular piece. I mean, even if all you wanted was the extra magic find from the helmet, well then that's all you need. Just put on the helmet, get a little bit of extra magic find, utilize it until maybe you get something, um, something specifically better than this for a magic find helmet. I'm not exactly sure what there is better than this for a magic find barbarian, um, but it specifically with the plus two war cries, um, it definitely does come in handy for um, a lot of barbarian builds. 
And um, the pieces of this set are actually surprisingly easy to come by. And I think that's one of the reasons why it made it so high on my list, is that the gloves, the belt, the boots, and the helmet are all exceedingly easy to come by. Um, the weapon also is exceedingly easy to come by, even though most people don't use it. Um, it does actually have a very interesting use if you are a necromancer. Ah, it can be used to create iron golems with, and it is actually a very good iron golem. <laughs> Honestly, very, very good. Um, because it has the 40% crushing blow, as well as the increased attack speed and the very nice damage to demons and damage to undead, it actually makes a surprisingly good weapon for a uh, necromancer. And it has two sockets as well, so what you're probably going to want to do on a necromancer who's trying to turn this into an iron golem is you're going to want to put some nice things in there to make the uh, your iron golem maybe attack with more damage or elemental damage or give him a faster attack or whatever it may be. I mean, you don't really have to put something super special in there because these drop often enough that you will probably have a full stash of them if you hang on to them for iron golems. And uh, customizing them with specific runes to make them a little bit better is certainly uh, something that you can do. Um, let's move on to the next on the list, which is Talrasha's Wrappings. So Talrasha's Wrappings is probably one of the best sets in the game, um, but specifically for sorceresses. Um, it does have some interesting niche uses outside of the Sorceress, and the Sorceress doesn't always utilize the full set, although the full set is definitely useful on a Sorceress. Um, one of the best combinations for the Sorceress is the three-piece combination, which is the belt, the armor, and the amulet. Uh, the belt, the armor, and the amulet will yield you a very nice plus two to Sorceress skills, 65% magic find along with some very nice effects on the armor in terms of the resistances and 88 percent magic find and then the belt as well which gives a nice 15 percent magic find for a very nice total of 168 percent magic find um, from the three-piece bonus of the set um, the armor itself is also very nice on just about any character you want to put it on uh, with 40 percent to basically all resistances um, it is of course a missing poison which most people don't care about um, and it has 88% magic find, and with a huge reduction in the requirements, this can actually be a surprisingly good early magic find piece of equipment for a lot of characters. Um, if you're lucky enough to find this piece of equipment, you can socket it, throw a topaz in there, and bring up the magic find even further to, uh, to a very nice proportions. Um, the set itself has some very nice uses. Um, obviously, the amulet with plus two skills can be useful to about any sorceress if you find it early on. Um, the helmet is, while not very useful to the sorceress herself, is actually surprisingly good on a mercenary or a melee or ranged character due to its dual 10% leech and all resistances with life and mana. Um, it's actually a very, very nice placeholder helmet for most mercenaries, um, as well as a very good helmet to put on your melee or ranged characters early on until you get your best in slot piece. Um, and it drops all the time, like everywhere. Um, the full set is surprisingly good on a sorceress and quite honestly can carry you through hell difficulty just fine um, you can utilize it for magic finding and you can also socket the equipment and bring it up even further um, i mean at 168 percent magic find with a 24 percent uh, topaz in the armor and a 24 percent topaz in the helmet um, you're looking at over 200 percent magic find for a set that literally makes it so that you can do most if not all of what you need to do in Diablo 2. Now granted, you're not going to be doing things like killing ubers on a sorceress, but you're going to have no issue farming with this particular set, and uh, and that's really what a lot of people like to use the Talrasha set for, especially early ladder, is they'll gather the set, put it on, and uh, either in the three-piece configuration or the full configuration, and they will utilize it to magic find and get better equipment for themselves and the rest of their group. Um, all in all, the Talrashes deserves the number two spot on this list, just simply because of the usefulness of each individual piece, as well as the usefulness of the entire set and multiple bonuses. Um, it's just a very nice set, a very powerhouse of a set all around, and uh, it beats out IK just simply because of the 
multitude of usefulnesses. While IK is generally useful to both barbarians, melee characters, and ranged characters, Talrashes is useful to casters, ranged, and melee, and quite honestly can be utilized by mercenaries as well, which is a, a plus. Literally everybody can get something out of Talrashes, whether it just be the armor or the helmet, or whether it's the full set or the three-piece bonus, all of it can be useful on this particular set. Now, granted, um, you're going to find so many Talrosh's masks that eventually you're just going to be throwing them away, but it's always nice to have one or two sitting in the stash to utilize when needed or to give to somebody who uh, who needs it. And uh, everybody is always looking for Talrosh's amulet and armor, so uh, those are definitely good as trading pieces of equipment as well. Even if you don't specifically need them, if you happen to find yourself a Talrosh's amulet or Talrosh's armor uh, during your playthrough, you can very easily trade those for a better piece of equipment for your specific build. Uh, moving on to the number one set in Diablo 2. I wonder if you've guessed it. That's right, as you can see by the vampire form in front of me, I've ranked Trangul's as the number one set in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And you might be asking me, well, why would you rate that set as the number one set? I mean, who wants to be a vampire? But the correct answer is, is um, it doesn't matter. Um, the vampire form is really just icing on the cake, and while the vampire form is not exactly the best, and the full set is not exactly the best, um, each individual piece does have its own specific uses, and uh, quite honestly, I think you'll find, after I explain myself, that the triangles really does have a lot going for it. Uh, but before we talk about the individual uses of the pieces, let's talk about the one amazing benefit, or rather two amazing benefits, of the full set. Um, number one is that it gives you fire mastery. Triangles is the only set in existence, or the only item in existence in the game that gives a fire skill, a fire mastery skill, as an O skill for your character, which means that all fire damage that this character puts out is enhanced tremendously. Um, if, unfortunately, you can't, but if you could put this on other characters, I guarantee you there would be a lot of other characters utilizing that fire mastery. Um, the other thing here is that the Necromancer, or rather the Vampire form, um, does not suffer from run-walk penalties, um, especially when walking. So as you'll notice, um, as I am running, my chance to block and my defense are completely gone. However, when I toggle my walk button and I walk, you'll notice that I'm walking at the same speed that I'm running. Uh, this is an intrinsic benefit of the Trangul set that a lot of people don't understand. Um, is that basically this set allows you to move at the same speed as a runner while keeping your defense and your block chance, uh, which makes this a highly defensible set and can be utilized even in things like PvP to um, give you an advantage of being able to move at full speed while maintaining your defensive stance. Now let's talk about the individual uses of Trangul's, um, and uh, I'd like to go over them one by one, shall I? So the first one right off the bat is Trangul's Gloves. Trangul's Gloves have 20% faster cast with 25% poison skill damage and 30% to cold resistance. Um, because there are only two gloves in the entire game that have faster cast on them, which is Mage Fists and Trangs, Trangs ends up being best in slot for a lot of builds, um, specifically builds that require the cold resistance uh, as well as the poison skill damage. Uh, the poison skill damage is also something that comes in very handy for a lot of builds. Uh, for instance, if you build a poison javelin zon, if you build a uh, shape-shifting rabies druid, if you build a poison dagger necromancer, um, there are any number of characters that can get good use out of poison skill damage. And basically what you're looking at is that any character who wants some really nice poison damage gloves, these are actually a really solid choice. Um, we also have a very nice three-piece bonus that involves these gloves as well. Um, so if you are a poison character, uh, for instance, a poison dagger necromancer, um, one of the best three-piece bonuses that you can do is the Trangul's Claws, the Trangul's Belt, and the Trangul's Wing. Um, and the reason for this is that the wing will give you negative 25% enemy poison resistance, along with the 25% poison skill damage and cannot be frozen on the belt, which makes this three-piece combo, like, literally best in slot for poison necromancers. 
Um, we also have some other very interesting things here. So right off the bat, um, we talk about Trangul's belt having cannot be frozen. This means that Trangul's belt is actually best in slot for some builds. Um, if you cannot use cannot be frozen on a ring, or you cannot use cannot be frozen on a helmet or an armor, whatever it may be, Trangul's can come in extremely handy because it is one of the few cannot be frozen belts. We went over one of the other cannot be frozen belts in the game, which is the death set, which is the reason why that one made it to number four. Um, so right off the bat now, we already have some very good uses. We have the three-piece bonus, of course, which is very, very sexy for necromancers. Um, we also have the gloves, which can be utilized by any caster type class, as well as poison class, so they are very dual-purpose gloves, which can be utilized by a large number of characters. Um, we also have the belt, which can be utilized by anybody for the Cannot Be Frozen effect. And then uh, we also have the full bonus, which gives us the ability to block while walking, essentially, at full speed. So we're blocking while running. Um, and um, the very interesting thing about the armor is that it has a massive 40% faster run walk. And, uh, and I've utilized the armor on many occasions because of its negative requirements as well as its 40% faster run walk, just simply on characters that I want to get around quickly. Um, you will find Trangul scales very often, and they're not, like, rare at all. In fact, the rarest piece of this set, uh, believe it or not, is the Trangul's belt. I usually find Trangul's belt the least. Um, out of all the pieces, um, the two rarest are Trangul's girth and Trangul's guys. And the guys is probably one of the worst pieces, and really it's the only piece that most people don't want to actually put on. But if you're going to build the full set, you have to put it on, uh, because otherwise you know, you're know, you not going to get the Necromancer form. Um, this piece being one of the rarest is kind of just like a <laughs> a very silly thing um especially when you consider the fact that uh, nobody really wants to use it however the belt whenever you find trangul's belt i would definitely recommend picking up trangul's belt and hanging on to it because it can be extremely useful for the cannot be frozen um, the two-piece bonus between the gloves and the belt can also provide you with an extra 40% cold resistance, um, which is not a terrible thing, as well as regenerate mana 30% and 13 to firewall and 18 to fireball. Now, before they um, nerfed firewall, it was actually kind of ridiculous because you could literally put on a two-piece bonus like this um, and uh, you could get... Sorry, that was not two-piece bonus. You could get uh, level 18 Fireball, or you could put in three pieces, uh, and three pieces would give you the Firewall. And uh, the Firewall could actually be utilized with characters like uh, the Paladin with Max Conviction, um, and you could you could literally kill things, and I did this before. You could literally kill things with the firewall on a max conviction paladin um, with relative ease, utilizing plus skill equipment because it actually gives you the firewall. Um, as far as sets go, Trangs is definitely one of the more interesting sets in the game uh, because it offers you a large number of different effects um, from the poison skill damage and the poison resistance to the massive amount of plus to skills that it gives you, um, including the cannot be frozen, the faster cast, um, the multiple different ways that it can be equipped in different combinations. Um, like, for instance, um, you could be utilizing just simply a four-piece bonus for additional lightning resistance, additional cold resistance, uh, replenish life, so forth and so on, so that you could get the meteor, the fireball, the firewall. It's one of the few sets in the game that actually gives fire mastery, um, and I would love to see some more sets that could give fire mastery, lightning mastery, maybe even cold mastery, because I feel like it could really open up a lot of very interesting options for the Necromancer. Um, the fire mastery also, believe it or not, heavily improves the damage of Corpse Explosion, because Corpse Explosion is 50% fire um, and does get affected by fire mastery so um, as you're utilizing corpse explosion on a summon necromancer um, you're going to get some pretty amazing damage on your corpse explosion as well um, the reason why trangs made it to number one on this list is really due to its versatility um, 
when you find a pair of Trangul's claws, you generally hang on to them. Uh, the 20% faster cast is almost indispensable, especially early ladder, when everybody is hunting for Trangs or Mage Fists for their caster-type classes. The cannot be frozen on the belt is absolutely invaluable for certain characters who cannot use Raven Frost uh, or don't have Cham Runes laying around to sock it in their helmet or armor. Um, the three-piece combo uh, from the wing, the belt, and the gloves is absolutely best in slot for poison necromancers. And then on top of that, um, the faster run walk, along with the fact that the, the set itself has some very interesting um, uses and very interesting builds, uh, just really kind of puts it over the top for me. Um, I definitely struggled with this one to try and determine, in my opinion, which one was number one. And it was between Tal's and Trang's, and it could go either way. I could put Tal's over top of Trang's, uh, but I really feel like the versatility is what really kind of put it over the top for me. Uh, while Tal's is definitely a very useful set, I do feel like it is more restricted to the sorceress herself than other characters. Uh, whereas Trang's, on the other hand, gets utilized by just about every character in the game. Um, any character who wants faster cast will more than likely put on a pair of Trang's gloves. Any character who wants poison skill damage will put on those gloves. Um, any character who wants cannot be frozen will put on that belt. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just very useful in general. Um, and then on the Necromancer itself, it's also very useful. Um, is it best in slot? Probably not. As a Necromancer, you will probably end up putting on other pieces of equipment. But here's the thing. Towels is not best in slot for a Sorceress. The majority of Sorceresses will put on other pieces of equipment eventually. IK is not best in slot for most barbarians or even other characters that want to utilize IK, they will usually end up putting other pieces of equipment on eventually as well. In fact, the majority of the sets, in fact, all of the sets for the most part, are not best in slot equipment. There are very few sets that literally you can say will make it to best in slot slot pieces of gear. And Trangle's Claws and Trangle's Belt, as well as Trangle's Wing, do in fact make it to best in slot lists, uh, simply because of the fact that they have effects that no other pieces of equipment have. Um, I have literally seen um, these on those lists. And, uh, and I'm trying to convince myself at this point because uh, I, I made this list at work. I kid you not. I made this list at work. And I spent a long time writing down what I felt like each particular set was good for um, and how the sets functioned as a whole. And you know what? Let me read you what I wrote down um, for Trangs because it's, it's very, very small. Um, Trangs made it to number, number one specifically because of its multi-purpose usefulness. Um, and that's really all there is to it. It is useful in multiple scenarios for multiple characters across all classes and builds um, can actually get good use out of the Trang's pieces as well as multiple pieces. And um, it is even very useful to the, obviously, the character that it's pointed at. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, um, even when it's an hour long on the top 10 sets. And if you disagree with me, absolutely fine. Put it down in the comments why you think I'm an idiot. Uh, I absolutely enjoy reading those comments. <laughs> and as always, keep watching.